Hey everybody, welcome back, Odin here, and we are going to continue playing Orwell. So, we've got some breaking news here, two dead after a second explosion. So we need to take a closer look here at the story. So this one, uh, yes, Symes, it is horrible, if you would give me a moment to read, I could probably agree with you. Okay, two dead, similar approach, same letter found. So these assaults are connected. And as if that wasn't enough already, Miss Watergate was in custody at the time, so that's her out of the picture. At least for this attack. Oh, this complicates matters massively, so much for our simple test case. I need to speak to my superiors and see how we're going to proceed given these extenuating circumstances. Did good today. You can log off and get some rest by clicking the button on the top right of the desktop. Try and get some sleep. I have a feeling the next few days are going to be trying at best. Alright, so he's referring to that button, I believe. However, before we do that, let's go ahead and take a look at the article. So this explosive charge was set off at Stelligan University in Bonton. At least two people dead, three injured, and once again a letter. So according to the story, half an hour ago an explosion occurred at the campus of Bonton University. According to latest reports, at least two people were killed, with a further three injured severely. The area was evacuated immediately. According to yet unconfirmed statements, the city administration office of Bonton received an anonymous letter just minutes prior to the detonation, which again contained the first three stanzas of the German folk song Die Gedanken sind frei, exactly like the letter received before the assault on the Freedom Plaza yesterday. We will inform you about any developments on this event as soon as further details are available. Alright, so, quick recap, we were investigating Cassie Watergate over here. And uh, we found that, yes, yeah, she had kind of joined that protest group that was called Thought, but she didn't seem to be all that gung-ho about it, at least not gung-ho enough to be prone to violence. It turns out that the, uh, the assault on the cop that was a big deal was apparently uh, a response to the cop abusing or, well, you know, or hitting one of her friends at the protest, so not so clear-cut. So what we're going to do is go ahead and follow our instructions. So are you sure you want to finish your work for today? All unprocessed data chunks will expire. Alright, so based on the data you submitted, we have learned the following. Okay, we had the assault at the plaza. We learned that thought might be involved. And then of course we had a second assault. And about Cassandra, She's been criminally charged with the injury of a police officer, so she has been arrested. She is an artist. The former criminal case may have been closed due to an illegal intervention by her parents, but we don't know. She's in a relationship with her lawyer. She seems to have undergone a radical change after she joined Thought. The data we collected shows that she has a potentially dangerous personality. And then her friend Juliet claimed that Cassie was just defending her when she injured the officer. And as I said, she has been arrested. So that's the summary of our first day. Time to move to day two. Or episode two, as it were. All right, welcome back. I hope you don't mind if we get started right away. We have tons of work ahead of us. I met with my superiors and they wish to continue with the test case. They believe in the capability of Orwell to handle this. Oh, and you, of course. My superiors agree with me. Based on the information you have already extracted, the activist group known as Thought is worth investigating. It seems that this Goldfells is an important member of Thought, so we now have clearance to consider them as a target person. Now that Goldfells is a target person, there may be new data chunks. Data chunks? <laughs> data chunks. I was trying to say data chunks and available at the same time. Uh, in documents you have already accessed. Don't forget to go back and recheck your sources. Alright, so now that we have this new profile, as he was telling us, we can go back to previous articles and things we've already read and see if there are new data chunks as they refer to Goldfells. And that, of course, is just the name we know him by. Alright, so here is yesterday's uh, arrest record. 
Okay, so the arresting officer was redacted, and where she's being held has been redacted. The suspect was arrested in her flat. She willingly opened the door and cooperated with the arresting officer after having the warrant announced and her rights read to her. So she wasn't uh, resistant, she wasn't hostile or anything like that. It's good to know. Okay, so let's check our headlines again. So this would be the latest connection between Bonton bombings evident. So attacks against Stelian University in Bonton and Freedom Plaza are connected, experts conclude. All right. So, the bombing that occurred yesterday at Stelligan University seems to be connected to the attack against the Freedom Plaza earlier this week. This is the conclusion of the police division who is investigating the cases. In both assaults, a similar explosive device, created with pure malevolence, appeared to have been used, police spokeswoman Steele said. The letters received prior to the assault seem to support the suspicion, while their meaning is still puzzling investigators. According to rumors, People have been theorizing the number of stanzas might represent the number of bombings, which in turn raises the question whether there might be another bombing yet to occur. We understand that some people jump to this conclusion, but there is no good reason to believe this, Steele answered when confronted with this theory during a press conference. Meanwhile, Stelligan University has declared that normal operation cannot continue under these circumstances, so they will be closing their doors for the time being. The university has also put up a special front page to pay their respects to the assault victims. See above image. Okay, so I'm guessing this is the image you would see on their website. Alright, let's see what else we got here. So Timelines, that's the social media platform that we were looking at for Cassandra. So the Davenport siblings, owners of the biggest social network Timelines, announced major cooperation with software giant Rosen Technologies. Funny how this mirrors the real world, huh? Alright, so it's a big deal. The internet billionaire siblings Ada and Alan Davenport, creators and owners of the most important online social network Timelines located in Hillbury, are starting a major cooperation with the Bonton software giant Rosen Technologies. This has been announced in a press statement given out on Friday by the PR departments of both companies simultaneously. By utilizing the existing infrastructure and software development capabilities, or capacities, of Rosentech, Timelines will be able to respond to the needs and requirements of the quickly changing digital world in real time, Timelines executive Ada Davenport is quoted. Our growing user base will profit from this by significantly reduced downtimes, tightened security, and a sped up integration of new features, she continued. Alright, so that that's an interesting thing. And heavy rainstorm is expected for the weekend. I think we can probably just skim this here. So if you had any plans for the weekend involving the outdoors, you better forget about it. Got a low pressure system coming in. Uh, there is a literal silver lining on the horizon, however. Over the coming week, the clouds will move on, I guess, and temperatures will stabilize at comfy levels. After a long and harsh winter, spring will finally win the upper hand. I'm guessing the literal silver lining would be, like, clouds or something? I don't know exactly what's literal about that, but anyway. Okay, so those are the headlines. And let's see what else we got here. So now we've got some more documents here about thought. First let's go to Goldfells. So this again is from their website. And this would be, you know, meet meet the staff, you know, or whatever. So he's the admin. Might have a stash. Or he might just desire one. Uh, he's written five articles. He's registered since March 2012. And he last logged in a few months back and we don't have any contact information for him, but I guess we'll have to use this as his portrait. Okay, so we read this blog entry before where he talked about the German folk song. And I guess they want us to add this to his file, the fact that he did talk about that song. So this connects him to the letter, possibly. So the letter. We are right, it seems. All right.
Alright, so when he was still young, long before he immigrated to the nation in 1993, so he did immigrate in 93. An immigrant. Hmm. Guess it'd be interesting to find out where he came from. And he apparently is the creator of the blog. The Thought, an activist group with the same name as this blog. If Goldfels is the one who created the blog, perhaps he found it or even was the leader of the activist group. Alright, got some comments down here. And we did read these before, but we're just going to see if we have any new data chunks. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Alright. Okay, don't see anything new there, but we do have another entry that we looked at before. Well, actually, had we read this one before? I thought we read one by him and one by Cassandra under her name. It's like Catharsis or, or something like that. Okay, maybe this is new. All right. So this is from July 2016. I thoroughly believed we were able to capture minds. If only we could garner attention on thought as a group and what we stand for. It seems my ambition was once again too much. After one and a half years, recruiting two of my students and arranging three demonstrations like the one held at Freedom Plaza, I feel obliged to ask myself where we stand. Have we reached our goal? What has been sacrificed along the way? In short, are we true to the initial goal that formed the group? Frankly, and sadly, the answer to the latter is a resounding no. We let ourselves be consumed by anger and hatred towards those we thought to do us wrong. Thoughts are free, but that does in no way mean that they can attack and do whatever they wish. Instead of blaming others, I now see my high aims might well be the cause for all the events of the past months. More than anyone else of thought, I feel responsible. As a consequence, I will halt my active engagement in this group. I firmly believe it shall be for the better of everyone involved, especially my students from Stelligan. Yours sincerely, A. Goldfels. So the dude is a lecturer at the university where the bombing just happened. That's interesting. So here's a comment, please reconsider. Guy hurt, there was only a goddamn cop. They had it coming for long. It was messy, I know, all the way back to the thing I messed up organizing. But hell, look at the bright side, we made the news. This is what we wanted, what you wanted. All right, so Goldfels apparently resigned in July of 2016. Whatever active engagement means, still an interesting fact. He is a lecturer, if not a full professor. What now, Stelligan? The same Stelligan where a bomb just exploded? You know what I think about coincidences. I won't repeat it. Alright, so he mentioned that Thought held three demonstrations and we're looking at the three stanzas and possibly three bombings. Recruited two students for Thought. Hmm. Three demonstrations. More interesting might be that two students seem to be involved. So far, the evidence suggests that Goldfels was a prominent lecturer at Stelligan, and some of his students became involved in thought. Did he, like, recruit them for his cause? We need to identify those students, see who else is involved with the group. Alright, so... We have conflicting data chunks here. And so the conflict is... He reacts with hatred and anger about the troubled past and then hinted... Well, in other words, one of them shows a tendency towards violence and the other shows like a... what we might call a come-to-Jesus moment. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, I think I see. So here he's kind of, there's a collective blame. You know, we all did this. And then here he's saying it was ultimately my fault. 
Hmm. That's, well... It's kind of hard. Honestly, I think, even though this may well be a lie, I mean, I think this is more relevant. A troubled past. We'll have to get to the bottom of this. Alright, so here's a new document. So this is Stelligan's website. Knowledge, science, wisdom. Oh, they arrested a suspect in the bombings. Gotta check that in a minute. Alright, so let's see. So this is from today. Yesterday evening, an explosive device went off on Stelligan campus, killing a Stelligan student as well as a lecturer. Several other individuals have been severely injured. The authorities are investigating. This is an unspeakable tragedy, Stelligan President Hopkins said during the press conference that took place this morning. In the light of recent events, it is impossible to maintain daily routine. This is why I have decided to suspend all educational services of Stelligan University until further notice. Therefore, Stilligan campus will remain closed, at least for the rest of this week, with no educational courses or events taking place. Alright, we saw that their canteen a few days ago got Best Public Dining Hall in a nation's best competition. See if there's anything we might glean that might be important here. So these are the departments and I guess the degrees offered. Yeah. Well, well, well. Media ethics is currently unavailable due to Representative Professor A. Goldfels having retired. Well, well, well. And I think that links to his bio page. But let's... Applied physics, okay. Let's click on his page. Being a luminary in his profession, Abraham Goldfels gladly accepted the offered professorship in the field of media ethics at Stelligan, from which he sadly retired in the fall of 2016. So his name is Abraham. Abraham it is, well done. He was a professor of media ethics. Did you notice the bombing locations seem to be closely connected to thought members? There could be a pattern emerging. Thought has held three demonstrations, yet there have only been two bombings, which might imply, well, it's definitely a shot in the dark, but we absolutely need to do everything we can to prevent another attack. Take a close look at the past of each member with thought. Find out the locations of all demos they have held. That might yield a hint. Yeah, so that's the same thing I was ruminating about here just a little while ago. All right, there's another photo of him. This would be his official photo. We'll update it. All right, so previously, Professor Goldfels has held a position as a journalist at Dear Reporter, one of the most renowned German daily newspapers, so he's a German immigrant, and was also a chairman of the Global Media Ethics Congress. In his works, Professor Goldfels never relents to emphasize the importance of privacy over public interest. All right. So he was a journalist previously, which makes sense then that he would be a professor of media ethics. He, well, he would have first-hand experience. And then, of course, he was a chairman of the Global Media Ethics Congress. Member of an ethical Congress. Just the average run-of-the-mill terrorist trait. Wow, that's a whole lot of information about this Goldfels, yet only one other page could be indexed. Very strange indeed. I think the next course of action should be to look for other people of this thought group, like the students he mentioned. And look at this. In his significant publications, he is the author of a book entitled Die Gedanken sind frei. So we see the German connection coming through here and it's a modern time declaration of independence towards mass surveillance. So he's, he's gonna have a problem with Orwell, he's gonna have a problem with me. 
Well, what do you say to that? He literally wrote the book. Yeah, no kidding. Alright, so we got a bunch of new stuff to check. I want to see this headline about the arrest. So, breaking news. First suspect in connection with assaults arrested. Uh, I, oh, this... I wonder if this is about... No, we already had the article about Cassie, right? I don't remember. I don't know, maybe we didn't. So a couple of minutes ago, the Bonton Police Department reported that an arrest in connection with the recent bombings in the Capitol has been made. This is probably about Cassandra. Yeah, a woman arrested. I thought that they had arrested someone specifically related to the university bombing. Okay. So this just makes it official. A couple of minutes ago, the Bonton Police Department reported that an arrest in connection with the recent bombings in the Capitol has been made. A young woman has been brought into custody thanks to investigation efforts of a special task force, police spokesman Kaufman said. How the woman is related to the bomb attacks, Kaufman did not cover. However, it is rumored that the suspect is well known to authorities by other incidents. That's somewhat true. Alright, so back to the website. Apparently there's something new on this front page. Or not on the front page, maybe? Let's, I guess we gotta check here. So here's alumni, people who have graduated from here. The legacy of a university is carried on by its most remarkable alumni, some of which are honored on this page. So here's Orlando Buffert, a Stelligan alumnus of the biotechnology course, and he's the founder and CEO of one of the highest grossing online grocery trading companies, Imcato. Now there's a familiar name, Catherine Delacroix, Ever since her early study years as a student of criminal law, Catherine Delacroix has been a member of the party. In 2009, when the party had been elected as government, Delacroix was named head of the newly created Ministry of Security. Yeah, so she was a Stelligan alum. Oh, and look at this, what a small world. It's Cassandra's boyfriend. Joseph Langley opened his own law office in the city of Bonton some years after his graduation from Stelligan in 1992. His law office is probably best known for having defended construction entrepreneur Elwood Hendricks in what gained public attention as the Lion Share Scandal. And then Joanna McElroy. Having studied medical technology at Stelligan, Joanna McElroy now is the host of the eponymous daily TV show Four at McElroy's in which she covers psychological family issues. Okay. So what is this? Welcome to the internal Stelligan University class attendee system, also known as Isacol, or something like that. Pick a class by completing the three-step wizard below. Please select a semester. Alright, so if I remember correctly, Goldfell's retired in July of 2016, was that right? Uh, media. And here we have Goldfell's. So he taught a class in the summer. Okay, showing 27 attendees of class number 58332 during summer semester 2016. So this is the list of students. Ah, uh, Lamont Becker, you failed. Uh, lots of B's and C's. Sandra Costa was a guest, so she was an auditor of the class. And not a registered student. This poor person, Monty Dyer, has failed the exam one time before, but they did pass this time. Uh, not admitted to take exam due to too many mists. Now this Goldfells is kind of hardcore, huh? Hey, it's Juliet. Yeah, so this is the girl who claimed in, I think, at least a text message with Cassandra that she was being beaten by that cop, and that's why Cassandra assaulted the cop. She got an A, and she had a master thesis. Uh, registered this course. Well, well, that's interesting because she was at the protest. So we have seen this name before, haven't we? 
Right. She was a friend of Miss Watergate. Now it also appears that she was a student of Abraham Goldfell's. I think that's enough to warrant a report. Give me a few minutes. All right. We have authorization to investigate Miss Carrington. Oh, I love it. Another tentacle. All right. See if there's anything else important here. Any data chunks? Yeah, here's another guest. Harrison O'Donnell. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? I don't remember exactly what that who that was. Harrison O'Donnell. Yes, we've seen that name connected to Miss Watergate. I'll report this right away. We've been authorized to consider Harrison O'Donnell a target person. Now there's some more work for you. Congrats. Harrison and Juliet. Those must be Abraham Goldfell's students within thought. Well done. I guess that there was a conversation in which we learned that Harrison was at one of the protests as well as Juliet, I guess. I don't... I know we've got something up here at the listener, but I still... want to make sure all this is taken care of. Okay, so we'll get to this in just a moment. Okay, so here is Cassandra talking with her boyfriend again. Hey, you. Sorry about last night. I really should have come over. Remember, he had some kind of uh, obligation at work. It's just that this client is massively influential and could bring a whole lot of exposure to the office. I've been trying to get a meeting for months, and it went rather well, so... Here's hoping. Oh God, I'm such a stupid old man who just talks about his job too much. I'm sorry, it's, it's just such a big part of my life. Hello? Are you still upset? Oh, I guess he doesn't realize that she's been arrested. That's right. Cassie? Can you at least answer me? If you don't, I'll start to worry. You know what I'm like. Well, you better start worrying, my friend, because she is in the clink. Okay, so let's take a look at Juliet's timeline page. And we're gonna click on this here. Okay. So according to her page, she is a PR assistant at Rosen Tech. Rosen Tech, that's the group, that's the company that is partnered up with timelines. Which we just learned. Uh, we've got her birthday. We've got her place of residence. And it appears she enjoys guitar, singing, books, and board games. Alright, so she likes Stelligan University, where she graduated from. She likes the targets, just like Cassandra. The Farview Public Library. And Cafe Chestnut. So let's take a look at her wall here. So this is from last month. From Cassie. Hi, you actually can dance, and I got proof now. And there's the two of them dancing. I guess I can't make this her photo. Okay. You still in bed? And here's Juliet. Uh, is that really me? I gotta be careful around you, apparently. Great photo, though. Who took it? Nice try, Jules. A magician never reveals her tricks. Anyway, thanks for a great time, Cassie. I must admit, it felt kind of good to go out for once. Not that I plan on doing that again anytime soon. And here's Adam Dunbar. What? Every time I ask you out, you're so goddamn busy, and then you fall for freaking muffins? If I ever had known that before... Sorry, Adam. Maybe you need to spy on me some more? That would be a very uncomfortable comment right there. <laughs> All right, earlier that month, I am bored to death tonight and definitely need someone to come along here. Or here, Julesy, 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 I got something for you. These must be the muffins. Got it. It's strange, because we're reading in reverse chronological order. Okay. Oh no, my one weakness, exposed for everyone to see. Okay, tell me. What must I do to get one of those? I'm prepared for the worst. Just go out with me and explore Bond's famous nightlife, will you? Um... And then someone else, you got a message, Cassie, you need this recipe for my mom. Yuck, you know I'm not so keen on going out late night. Why is that in quotes? Plus, I don't dance, ever. Care to spare me, please? So she dislikes going out. She did it anyway. 
apparently for the muffins, and that's what that dude was joking about, I guess. But it's okay. I fully understand you. I think I will then spend the evening in bed, watch movies, and eat a hell of a lot of muffins. Out of frustration. Alright, alright, you win. I'll be there in half an hour. That torture and cruelty by my friend. Now, where is Amnesty International when you actually need them? So, this just reinforces the fact that they're friends, but we already knew this. But I guess that confirms. Torture? Is this... is that correct? What? Wow. Isn't she referring to what... like jokingly referring to what Cassie's doing right now? This only underlines her assessment as potentially dangerous from yesterday. No, it doesn't. Really? That, that's, that's not at all what that... Okay. Oh, look what we got here. Happy birthday, honey. So good to have you back. To mark the occasion, we decided to update your profile on our family page. I hope you like it. So this is Esther. Maybe that's her mom. Welcome to our website. A man walks into a bar and meets the girl of his dreams. They marry, settle down, and have four daughters. We are the Carringtons. Alright, yeah, happy birthday from me as well. Have a good one. Wherever you are. And then back here, Juliet was being down on herself. Nobody took notice. Nobody cares. Nobody. What did Harry do this time? Geez, as much as I like him, you really need to ditch him. Maybe people would care if you would be, I don't know, less enigmatic? And then here, only one week left until I have to enter my thesis at Abraham's course, and then it's goodbye, Stelligan. I am a bit scared of the huge gaping hole this is going to leave behind. Ah, girl, you're going to manage. I know it's a scary thought at first, but we'll stay in touch no matter what, hear me? Thank you, Amanda. I feel much better already. We definitely keep in touch. Now, this drives me outright mad. Even though Cassandra and I just got to know each other at the protest at Freedom Plaza, she stood up for me regardless, so they had just met each other at the protest, apparently, when all this stuff went down. That's interesting. This woman is a heroine, not a terrorist. Go Cassie. Okay, and then whoever this dude is, if one pisses off the government, one must expect them to respond accordingly. Action causes reaction, that simple-mindedness. Also, this doesn't sound like the Juliet I know. You wouldn't even accept the duty of being the class representative when you were appointed. How come you care so much about politics now? I'm not surprised you stand up for your beliefs underneath your strong one, but activism? Attending demonstrations? Is that still you? So apparently she was... Cassandra was not... Or I'm sorry, Juliet was not very interested in this stuff until right before the protest. First Miss Watergate, now her. Is there some sort of brainwashing going on? Sometimes people change their minds. Sometimes other people help to get the right mindset. Find out what you truly care about. This is about our freedom, and I know what it feels like not to be free. What would you want me to do instead? Sit at home being indifferent? Indifferent? No, I just see no use in occupying public plazas and throwing stones at poor men and women. I, this is a democracy. We have petitions for that. And here's Harrison. I'm so proud of you that you're capable of using the essential tool of any good slacktivist. Hell, I would like to post a really slow clapping sound, but timelines doesn't allow it, so just friggin' imagine it if you can. Harry, while I really appreciate that you've got my back and everything, I don't think you need to intervene here. This is a Rick and Juliet only thing. Thank you. Alright, that was a lot of information. So we've got some new stuff to check out here, but we're going to have to check that out in the next episode. So I hope you're enjoying this Let's Play of Orwell. I certainly am. Please let me know what you think down there in the comments. Hit the like and subscribe button, and I will see you all next time.